how do you folks, in the immortal words of John Bon Jovi, we are halfway there. Um, so we're at part three of the five part series where I walk you through the high level understanding of the information you need to get certified as a FinOps practitioner. This week, we're moving on to the domains of FinOps. So I'm going to cover three additional ones today. Understanding cloud usage and cost, performance tracking and benchmarking, and real-time decision making. So first up, we have understanding cloud usage and cost. So at its highest level, it does exactly what it says on the tin. We get this big cloud bill um, that's hundreds of thousands of lines long, hundreds of lines wide. We need to understand that what we're actually using and how much it's costing us. Um, so the FinOps Foundation have broken down a number of capabilities or elements of doing FinOps to understand our cloud usage and our cloud cost. So first up, we have measuring unit costs. So at its simplest term, this is about establishing a unit of measurement, such as it's called uh, unit economics. So this might be the cost to support 1 million customers or the cost to support one customer, depending on the size of your business or, or the granularity. Um, but by having this unit cost in place, you can track um, how you're performing because that's your variable cost versus um, the price you charge it at, which is an essential business term to understand your profit. Um, next up, we'd have managing shared costs. So there are an element of costs within your bill from your cloud provider that are can't be broken out by business unit or account. They're just, as the name suggests, a shared costs. So these would be example of support costs or your networking costs. So you need to come up with a methodology for split, breaking that cost out and spreading it across the business would be the, the other function of FinOps would have to perform, which ties into cost allocation. So to break down the costs, we didn't push those costs out to the relevant BUs or applications or teams so that they know how much you're spending. It's not just one big cloud bill, it's split across the different BUs, so they have ownership and control of their slice of the cloud bill. Another element is going to be managing anomalies. So if we see a level of steady state usage and costs, and all of a sudden there's a spike, we will need to understand what is driving that spike. Is it something that we know about? For example, if you're a retailer and there's a Black Friday sale, so there's a big spike in activity, understandable, and that that's fine. But if it's something like someone has left on a really big machine or fat finger to line of code and spun up an extra large machine instead of a normal size one, um, that's something that we need to investigate and catch. Um, another element is forecasting. So understanding what we're going to spend next tomorrow, the next week, the next month by having better forecasting and understanding of what we're going to be spending on it allows the business make better decisions, and it also drives accountability to the business units. They'll be trying to, they'll be trying to break that forecast or or beat it to do optimization efforts to to come on underneath it. There's no one size fits all for this, and it is a bit of an iterative process. So the more you speak to be used, the better you'll get at forecasting. Next, we have data ingestion and normalization. So the cloud providers. Um, usage information is absolutely massive, um, but they do have some tooling available to allow you to, to pull this information down. So that's, you can use Power Query for GCP, the CAR for AWS, you, which is the cost and usage report, can be pulled using API, um, and Azure has its report suite of reporting tools as well. There is also like inbuilt tools within the console that are getting better all the time for extracting that that information. So you just need to get establish a process of pulling down that information and making and making sense of it, driving actionable insights from that information you're getting. There is a lot of third party tools that play in this space as well. So if you do have a cloud environment in your business, chances are you might be using one of these as well. Um, next we have the data analysis and showback piece. So the reporting of all these results needs to be done near real time. So the closer to the time that it's happened, the sooner we can action it, drive those improvements. And you can see those improvements come through in the data as well. So it, it kind of builds um, buy-in 
and also you want to kind of try and establish a queryable data set so that if an engineering team wants to look at certain parameters of their spend, like am I high on storage or computer? What service am I? Am I kind of is costing me most? Having a self-service element is something that would be that would be really really good for them to have. On the FinOps website, they go through how all of these um, capabilities are measured in a maturity framework. So that that crawl, walk, run we spoke about last week that framework is layered on top of these. So what does beginning stage, middle stage, and advanced stage look like for each of these capabilities? So it's um, it's kind of bringing, layering that maturity model onto all these is kind of tie, ties it all together. Then we have performance tracking and benchmarking. So here we have, it's, sorry, as the name suggests, it's tracking your performance, like how are you doing versus budget, versus forecast, versus your peers, versus other business units. So that's that's what you're trying to establish in this domain. So this is almost like your internal reporting um, domain of FinOps activities. So you've got resource utili utilization and efficiency. So is the right machine performing the right task? Is the box that you have, the instance that you're running, um, too big? Do you need to right size it down to a correct size? Is there elements being left on at evenings and weekends that don't need to be for dev and test that can be get that can be turned off? This is where we're looking at that performance. Are we getting the most out of our investment in the cloud? The measuring unit economics comes into it again, which we had in the last domain. Here we're looking at it from that point of view of comparing different business units perhaps against each other to build the best in breed um, element where um, lessons learned in one BU are applied to another. We also have managing commitment-based discounts. So this is where we're looking at our level of stead steady state usage and we're trying to track what percentage of that on-demand spend, which is the price you your pay-as-you-go price, how much of that is covered with commitments. So your commitments are your reserved instances, savings plans, could be convertible reserved instance or a COD, committed use discount in Google. So what percentage of your on-demand cost is covered by these savings instruments? The key here is to cover as much as you're, um, as you're able to without over-covering because if these instruments, these commitments go to waste, you're going to be charged for the, that commitment that's going to waste, and you're going to be charged for the workload that's on demand if a workload shifts. So it's something you need to track closely. Another one is managing anomalies, which we saw in the last one again. Again, here we're trying to see how long it takes us to detect these. How long does it take to fix these if we raise them with the engineering team? And where are they happening? Is it a certain business unit? Is it a certain um, group of engineers that are, are kicking out these anomalies all the time? Is it just part of their regular course of business and we can ignore them from an anomaly point of view? So all that needs to be taken into, into consideration in the tracking phase. Forecasting again, performance, tracking, forecasting, hand in hand. We spoke about it before. Um, that, that's going to be a key building block to, to any of this. And also budget managing. So building our budget, generally, they're going to be bottom up. So each engineering team is going to say, we're, we're spending X on cloud today. And we're going, we expect that, we project that to grow by 5% next year because we're going to have increased traffic or we're going to, it's going to drop by 5% because our traffic is steady and we're going to optimize our core infrastructure. These would be the kind of discussions you'd be having with your team when building a budget for the for the following year and understanding if there is variances then to that budget, what's driving that? Is it increased user traffic? Is it um, a change in infrastructure? Um, what What's driving those changes? So having an understanding at the budgeting phase will help you with that variance for your, and also in your forecasting. So it kind of becomes self, self-fulfilling. Next, we have real-time decision-making. So as the name suggests, this is trying to get our reporting and our decisions made as close to near real-time as we possibly can. Um, so we've got the first three are We've, we've kind of mentioned before, and with all of these, like measuring unit costs, anomaly detection, and data analysis, the closer we are to um, 
show these to the business and to identify these, the sooner we can action them and the sooner we can um, make a change. There are, for billing purposes in the cloud, there are 8,760 hours in a year. So your bill per hour, so if you catch it at on a Friday morning versus a Monday evening, um, that that's a significant swing if it's a big machine with anomaly detection. So time is very much of, of the essence. What we also have that's new within this domain is around establishing FinOps decisions and accountability structure. So this is kind of bridging the gap between the different teams that we saw in last week's episode when we covered the personas, um, your finance, engineers, leadership, product owners, um, FinOps, procurement. So bringing all of those, those teams together to drive some of these FinOps activities. So some of them FinOps can do the majority of things like commitment discounts, but for a lot of these elements, they will need interactions with a couple of different personas. So putting a structure in place, such as a RASI metric, which I did not know about before pulling this together, um, Google it, it's, it's quite, quite good, but it, it effectively talks about having clear roles and responsibilities for each, each stage of an implementation of a process so that at the end of when you meet every week, every month, there's a clear defined ownership. So something's either done or it's not by a specific person. So that's, that's a key part because otherwise elements will be discussed at a really high level, but they won't actually be implemented because we don't have that ownership structure and decision-making processes in place. So that is another one in the books, um, domains part one complete. So what we did today was we talked about understanding cloud usage and costs. We looked at the performance tracking and benchmarking. Um, the domain of capabilities there. And we also looked at real time decision making um, at a really high level. Like I said, the information and the FinOps website, which I will link to, is really detailed, really powerful. You don't need to go to that level of understanding for the exam. Um, and you don't need to be this high level either. So it's kind of somewhere in between is where you're looking to, to get to. Um, then next up, we have um, the second round of the domain. So we're going to be um, going, covering three more domains and a round of activities there that sit underneath it. So we'll see you next week. Like and subscribe and all that stuff. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye-bye.